Well, happy December, everyone. Chris Lopez here with the November market updates for Denver, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo. So we're going to go through the stats for those markets and just talk about some general trends that we're seeing out there right now. So I've got two co-hosts with me, Preston Newberry with Envision Advisors up here in Denver. Hey, Preston. Hey, Chris. How's it going? Really good. And Jenny Bayless, also with Envision Advisors, representing Colorado Springs. How are you, Jenny? I'm doing great. So, uh, I mean, you guys are, are you know, a pillar to these monthly market updates. And we definitely have some interesting stats going on with just some huge, you know, triple digit changes. Yeah. So we got some stats we'll definitely talk about. So we'll kind of talk about some interesting ones. You can always go through the show notes to see all the details of the stats. And then we'll kind of jump into some more just, you know, what we're seeing uh, on the market. But Denver, let's start. Or uh, Preston, let's start with <laughs> Denver as to what's going on. You know, kind of the same trends that we've been seeing for the last couple months here. We're seeing uh, still an increase in inventory. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, about 215% more single family homes on the market than what we did a year ago, which is really interesting to me, even though our active uh, <clears throat> listings is still 6,200 or so. Um, so we're still kind of cruising around there. Um, so let's talk about that number for a second, because I mean, that is, you know, Overall active listings are about 180% from November 22 to November 21. Yep. With that 200% being single detached single family homes. Yep. Um, now that's, you know, that's a huge triple digit growth, but that's looking from 6,000 properties now approximately to about 2,000 a year ago. Uh, but the previous month we were at 7,200. So a huge jump from a year ago, but that was obviously during COVID, you know, very low inventory. I think a lot of that is just the market returning back to, to more of a seasonality. Yeah, I mean, we're shift. down 14% overall from last month, right? So it's just kind of returning back to some seasonality, which I know we talked a little bit about last month, but really starting to see it here as we move into November and December. Um, and I think that that will continue probably through, you know, at least the first quarter of, of 2023. Some of the interesting other, other interesting things I found from this month is the number of transactions is down about 18% closed transactions. But again, this kind of follows that same pattern uh, of seasonality, right? If not deals aren't happening, we're not closing them. So that's, you know, kind of just, again, the seasonality that we can talk about. Um, but prices are still up 5% from a year ago. So you know, Chris and I were talking a little bit before the show and I was kind of expecting things to be a little bit higher, but as we know, uh, the world's in an interesting spot right now, but I'm still happy to see that there's still some positive gain on, uh, on closed prices for houses. It's, uh, it's so interesting now to go back and look at numbers from a year ago, because a year ago, the close was at 5,000. Yeah. When we had 2,000 on the market. So we had that phase where we had more in our contract mm -hmm. than we had on closing the market. on the market. Yeah. And now those numbers have kind of, I'll say inverted again back to normal, where we've got about 3,000 closed in November, about 6,000 on the market. And that just really shows how much the market has, has uh, shifted from pivoted, that. right? Yeah, I mean, that hot, 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 can't keep it on the market or can't keep it on the inventory to now. Stuff's actually sitting on the market, yep. you know, and that's the <clears> other <throat> interesting fact that I think is uh, <clears throat> Days on Market is now up 127% from this time last year. Um, but when you kind of break that out into single family homes and condos, uh, homes are up 140% and condos are only up 75% with days on market, but that still puts us an average of 34 days on market. Um, so yeah, things are up, but it's still, you know, not as crazy as people think. What about, uh, about prices? Yeah. Prices. Um, I think we're looking at, you know, think they're down 0.2% from last month, but as I mentioned previously, we're still up 5% year over year. So, you know, we see all these headlines, prices are dropping. It's, you know, the market's going to crash. The things are falling out of it. But, you know, I think when you really look at the data at the end of the day, it's just kind of, you know, cruising along right now. I think we'll see how things end up in December and close out the year, but we're still at a positive gain. And I mean, you know, Months ago, I expected that to be higher than the than the five percent price increases. But again, I, I mean, mean, it's still positive. So oh we'll yeah, take still that, positive. Right? Yeah, no, still, <laughs> so I was, you know, but of course, interest rates just went up so much. That's been. I'm really curious to see, you know, next month as things really close out for the year. Yep. But this is, I think, a pretty good gist of how the year will close out. Yep. And I think if we are uh, able to close the year out at anywhere near zero to 4%, I think that that's still going to be a, a positive way to end the year, especially with all the craziness that's yeah. uh, transpired over the last couple of months. The other stat to talk about is the close price to list price, where a year ago, on average, things were running at a premium, mm -hmm. like a hundred, uh, just under 102%. Now it's about 98%. So that just shows the softness of the market. 
and shows again we swung there's from some leverage for buyers now yep. right so all the all numbers are pointing that direction uh it's just been very interesting to see the 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 patterns from month over month like year over year, year over how year, much yeah. it's you know some and good how, how quickly quickly headlines changed, on there right like yeah quite interesting do you know what's going on with the springs pretty much the same just at a smaller scale <clears throat> so um kind of the same thing that that Preston just discussed Sales are down about 15% month over month. Um, if you do year over year, it's 36%. Um, but again, just an absolute value. We're talking about last year is 1500. Right now it's 900. So it's not a huge number when, when you're talking about actual units, but percentage wise, it, it presents itself a little differently. Um, same thing with new listings. New listings are actually down um, from last month to this month. Um, by 23%, which I thought was really interesting. Um, even more interesting, um, new listings are down from last November. So that was kind of, hmm. yeah, I wasn't really sure what caused that. I thought that was, I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting that, um, to say the least. In terms of price. Why? The new listings? Yeah, yeah, because I just felt last November was so constrained. Um, it's just hard to imagine that fewer new listings came out this November. this November. But yeah. I think that again goes back to the seasonality, right? I think mm -hmm. we're experiencing across both markets and all across the front range is that <clears throat> now people are kind of like, Hey, I'm going to wait and see how things shake out. I don't have to move right now. Right. Like absolutely might not be the best time to put my house on the market. But the other flip side of that is we're seeing a lot of people, um, at least up here in the Denver area, I talked to a lot of people that are like, Hey, I don't necessarily want to put my place on the market right now, but if you bring me an offer <laughs> or you know something like let's talk. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot of people just sitting on the sidelines, both buyers and sellers right now, waiting to see what's going to happen yep. and we'll kind of see how it shakes out. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, and then just in terms of prices, uh, median sales price decreased uh, month over month and we're still at a slight positive year over year. What was an interesting thing that uh, jumped out to me with the, the spring sales prices, and this is year over year, is that homes are up 4%, condos are up 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm surprised uh, there's that big of a discrepancy in, in, in values or prices. Yeah, I think it was just that condos and townhomes were you know, fairly inexpensive a couple of years ago, and they kind of got brought up with this recent wave of, um, you know, price growth over the last year or so. And I think that it just kind of got swept up with it. And I mean, really it's one of the more affordable options yeah. um, down there. So I, I could see that kind of continuing for, for a little bit longer. So a lot more of the condoms are probably in like the lower, like 50% of like overall prices out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We don't have like a lot of the you don't have like, luxury, luxury condos. condos. Right. Yeah. 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 Stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so I know you guys were mentioning wanting to see kind of how, you know, the end of the year shakes out. I think I'm most curious to see year over year trends from <clears throat> April, March. That's kind of, I think that will be the most telling. A little telling. more telling. Yeah. 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 I mean, come springtime, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what demand mm -hmm. comes back with the, you know, the busy spring with selling busy, season. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Any other stats for springs or no. Pueblo? No. I know. Okay. Um, so let's kind of pivot. Like, you know, we talked some stats there. Again, we wanted to touch on a very, a couple of them, but go to the link in the show notes for the full details or, or email us. We can get you the, the full reports if you want to dig through it. But let's kind of pivot into just more of the feel, the pulse on the market. Because, uh, you know, properties under contract, talking to sellers, uh, what is going on? in your world, Preston, with day-to-day -day transactions? I think there's still just a lot of hesitation and people not knowing what they want to do. They know they want to do something, but I think that, you know, obviously seeing what interest rates are doing, they're still bouncing around all over the place. Um, you know, there's a lot of people I think that are just kind of hesitating to wait to get through the end of the year and see kind of how things look as we get into Q1 of 2023. I think there's people that are still looking for opportunity. There's a ton of opportunity out there, but I think, you know, people are just kind of hanging out, um, seeing what happens with the rest of the world right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's not a reason to transact, you know, at this moment, I think people are just waiting. Yeah. I mean, if I mean, this is uh, not recommending anyone list their property in December right now. Mm -hmm. Nope. But if uh, the person is that, uh, you know, if you're a buyer or investor, I mean, this is we're we're seeing some really, good, some really deals. good deals out there. I right mean, now. as far as like just negotiations and, and the change and things and, 
there's there's leverage on the buyer side yeah. even though the numbers say that it still is in a seller's market i can tell you there's definitely a lot more leverage right now on the buyer side of things yeah. it's gonna be really interesting to see like because it's that question hey well do i do i take advantage of it now or is that leverage and shift to buyer's market going to materialize more or things and pick back up in the springtime. Yep. Like it's, I mean, I, I have no clue, but I'm like very I, curious I think the overall, to watch. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be really interesting to watch. I think the overall sentiment is as we get through into like the first part of Q2 of 2023, I think everyone feels like things are gonna pick up a little bit more um, once we kind of get through and, and into the springtime. So we'll hopefully knock on wood and see how that goes. But um, yeah, I'm curious to see how it all plays out. Yeah. yeah. And then Jenny, you've had some, uh, you've had some interesting deals going on. Can you give a, uh, Give a high level overview of those. Yeah. So Leah has a client right now that um, she's under contract with him on the um, second part of a 1031 exchange. So the, the, you know, the purchase property and she was able to negotiate a lot of uh, very personalized things to, with the seller of, of this property. It's a, um, multi, a multifamily property in the Springs. It's a new build. Um, and the buyer wanted some very personalized things to it. And um, often a lot of things you don't see come with new builds, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it was, it was kind of funny because she and I were talking, she's like, I don't even know if I've ever written, um, <laughs> you know, this sort of thing in the contract. So we're just kind of, you know, um, talking with each other on how, on how to structure it. And, Yes, the seller came back and said, "Sure, yep." Yes so, to everything. Yeah, yes yeah. to everything. Um, it just goes to show if you don't ask, you don't you don't know, right? Yeah, which I think is interesting because it's putting additional risk on the seller in a way, um, you know, to to customize it. But yeah, that's just kind of where you we're at get right now. Creative right now, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, so this uh, some good examples here on the you know the existing market of, of existing inventory in homes. We've talked the last couple months about new builds. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, infill stuff, uh, bigger developments out by the airport. Mm -hmm. What do you guys see in terms of, of new build uh, price softness and opportunities out there? We've talked about that demand has slowed down, and especially year end. A lot of times builders want to close out, um, you know, houses or tracks I, to meet their numbers. I and can tell you I'm getting blasted daily with emails from all the builders and all of the communities about bring us an offer. We've got inventory. Let's make a deal. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> a lot of inventory, I think out there that they're wanting to get rid of. And I think they're feeling a little bit of the pressure right now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was joking. I think with you guys last month that I, I, I think that I could eat, you know, two meals a day, uh, just going around to <laughs> different, um, open houses for the builders. And yeah, it's interesting. Like I think a lot of builders are, um, they're either dropping the price, like Preston said, trying to sweeten the pot with incentives. Um, and then some are, are um, you know, pre-buying loans that, you know, I'm, we need to ask a lender really what the nuances of it. But they're, my understanding is that they're able to kind of lock in a, a loan package of a, of a certain amount and be able to offer yes, that with the ex sale of the house. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So they're able to pass that to the buyer ultimately, <clears throat> but they're um, they're fronting the, the funding to do that. So there is a risk. To the seller's part but ultimately hopefully that um you know generates more interest in their product so it takes a little bit of the volatility out of the rate as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well i mean like you i think you said there's one complex or one down there doing that i mean hey takes a couple million dollars to to fund that and guarantee it so i mean you know yeah. it's a it's a healthy float and you know healthy bet the the builder needs to do but mm -hmm. they can offer loans at a couple points lower yeah and that keeps it it's all very attractive. Right? Yeah. 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 It's a very interesting strategy. But I don't, will those, I've, I actually realized I forgot to ask the lender about this. I imagine those are, you know, more geared towards owner occupant homes. Yes. It will, That's my does that, yeah, does that uh, buy down, pre, pre buy down, whatever the proper term is, work for investor loans? My understanding is that they were only able to do it to FHA and VA. Okay. And I don't, I don't know mm. the, the rationale behind that. But yeah, that was what was probably some regulation. To me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But just an interesting strategy and maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll see someone come up with a creative way to do that for investors loans later. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, some other things that um, I have on my list, I'm a, as we've done a lot of these uh, portfolio analysis sessions, Jenny, you know, things I'm uh, getting investors queued up on things, good year end stuff is I think for a lot of people, the next year or two might be a good time to sell some properties and move out. Um, and so if that is potentially in your radar, you don't have to do anything, but 
be mindful of when your leases are going to be renewing. Mm -hmm. Like I have a couple properties, like I'll probably sell in 2024. Well, they have tenants in there, so I need to be worrying about now when their uh, leases get renewed and when they're expired. Because I'd like to line up to sell in you know February, March of 2024. So not totally sure I'm doing that, but I'm leaning towards that. I'm kind of making the move so I have that option uh, because that way I can sell it to an investor or sell it to an owner occupant. The other thing is, you know, we're, gosh, what, 23 days left in the year, um, (laughs) which blows my mind, but it's going to be starting to get tax time. A couple of days ago, you and I did a webinar, Jenny, on depreciation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did did some cost segregation stuff last year. Um, You did some stuff. I think this year, Jenny. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've talked to a lot of investors about doing that through like, um, you know, just education them and educating. And there's a lot, a lot of opportunities out there for people who bought rentals. So that might be a good thing on your radar too to do, because if you want to do it, the property has to be owned before the end of the year. Yep. And if you want to do a cost seg. It has to be placed in service before the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Details, Jenny. <laughs> talk to your CP, everyone. Uh, don't talk to me about that. Yeah. Uh, no, Jenny's correct. Um, but this type of stuff we're going to talk about too. So you, you get the yeah, place and service um, is absolutely the correct term. And then, you know, if you want to do it, it's kind of like you don't look for a new CPA in March because they don't want to talk to you. They won't talk to you. And cost state <laughs> companies are the same way. They're yeah. gonna, they're busy. So, you know, plan for that stuff now. And I've had two phone calls with my accountant to kind of map out, you know, hey, where my income is, what depreciation makes sense, do some very high level mm-hmm. planning. Real estate investors will be doing that as well. The other opportunity, and we're doing a, you know, we'll be doing a webinar on, on sell investment properties, Jenny. But I think there'll be some opportunities for house hackers out there who have, you know, bought some primaries, uh, mm-hmm. done some value add, or just had some really great appreciation pop. Um, might be some opportunities. Same thing. Hey, if you can sell that property within that capital gains exclusion window, that's going to be an option for some investors in a couple of years to take a couple hundred grand tax free off the table. Yep, exactly. Like, So lots of stuff to start planning out now since a lot of people are in kind of like, you know, watch mode. Mm -hmm. Fine. I get it. Let's see how spring plays out. But Um, there's still other things you can be doing behind the scenes, you know, to make sure your portfolio is optimized and you're ready to go when the time comes for whatever your next move is going to be. Yeah. So those are kind of some year and things I started jotting down. You guys got any other random tips or things you guys are personally doing uh yeah we're going to be doing a podcast soon uh, on five things that i've i've think that people should be doing during this downtime period. oh perfect yeah so tune into Great. that <laughs> i love it and then another interesting stat and this is just i'm looking at my highlighted notes here is that in november 19 uh, percent of all the buyers were cash which I mean, that's kind of been twenty percent often. Twenty percent, yeah, it's very often a, sticks around. But yeah. there's still, I mean, that's a fifth of the market is cash. They don't care about interest rates. Um, now, I imagine some are refining on the back end. You know, their their cost of capital, but a fifth of the market is cash buyers still, which means they're getting deals done. But it's fascinating because I mean, even you know, during uh, when interest rates were low and times were crazy, and now we're going here, it's it's all about the, about that, about the same percent. So yeah, about a fifth are cash buyers. Anything else? Any stats, thoughts, tips, opportunities out there? Not, uh, not that I don't think okay. we haven't already talked about. Yeah. Uh, oh, something I do want to remind everyone on. You know, last month or two months ago, we did uh, relaunch our deals email list. Yes. Since the market has shifted, we're seeing more deals out there now. Uh, we're seeing a couple of deals every week. Denver Springs Pueblo and some other stuff that we that we see. Mm-hmm. Um, some stuff is you know stuff we see on the market. Uh, more and more is coming off the market from clients or investors like, hey, uh, you know, I might sell us next year. I got, I want to sell this. What can you do? So there's definitely a lot more off market stuff coming out there now. And there's a lot more deal making, which is fun. Yeah. So if you guys want to see those, you know, reach out, we'll add you to the email list. Or, um, or if you've got deals you don't want to list right now, let us know too. Exactly. You know, that, we're always happy to try and try and play connectors and put a deal together. Yeah. Just see if you get any bites. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, that link is in the show notes, everyone. Jenny Preston, as always. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris.